Hello, welcome to LightPoint's webinar on hardware installation, specifically on our FSO products. My name is Brian Petersell. I am in charge of tech support here at LightPoint Communications. And I'm going to take you through uh, the slide presentation on mounting and setting up for LightPoint's FSO products. To give you a brief overview of LightPoint's history, you can see we were founded back in 1998. So we have an extensive amount of experience and knowledge when it comes to FSO deployments, installations, and troubleshooting. We hope that as we go through this guide, we can uh, give you some of our expertise and knowledge to help it make it easier for your FSO installation. Today we have two different products. Both are called the AirBridge. We have the AirBridge LX, which is our multi-beam, multi-receive product. Uh, we call it the quad beam solution. And the AirBridge LX has four transmitters and four receivers, but it also has automatic tracking and automatic gain control. This allows the unit to remain in focus and to be deployed in multiple solutions and various installations with the greatest amount of success possible. We also have the AirBridge SX, which we actually produce in two different versions. The standard version, which is for distances of approximately 200 meters up to about 500 meters, depending on your environment. And then we have the AirBridge SX wide beam, which is used for shorter distances, typically those in the 40 meter to approximately 200 meter range. Now, in each of these products, we have a software key license um, upgrade situation. The units come out of the box with 250 megabits per second full duplex operation. You can then purchase upgrade license keys which will bring the systems up to full gigabit capacity. Additionally we have what's called the hybrid option. This adds a redundant radio to the solution. So should the weather create a situation where the FSO is no longer able to communicate, the radios will automatically, the, uh, the lasers will automatically fail over to the backup radios. This hybrid option is available either um, during the time of purchase, we will program it and set it up with hybrid, or you can buy it as an add-on later once you have the system installed. Now briefly I wanted to also give you an overview of a couple of our other products, which is our millimeter wave solutions. The newest member of the millimeter wave solutions is the AirLink 60 series. This is available in an SX, which is an integrated antenna for your shorter distances, your MX for medium distances, and then you can also get it with a two-foot antenna referred to as the LX product. Again, this is our newest product. Um, it uses a nine-stage modulation to keep the system up and running for as long as possible. The Airbeam uh, G. 80 system is available in an MX or an LX, as you see here, but we also have the Air Extreme product, which is a low latency product, and it also comes with a uh, one foot MX or two foot LX capable. And then lastly, you'll see we have what's called a dual pole adapter, and that's on the far right hand side, and that allows you to then bolt two of our uh, air beam or air extreme ODUs to a single antenna in order to gain more bandwidth by still using one antenna. Now depending on your situation and your deployment location, and you should talk to sales here at LightPoint regarding uh, your actual uh, deployment, we might be able to take a look at it and see which is the better option for you. Uh, FSO is a great option, and again, we've been doing this for um, well, what, over 15 years. Uh, but in certain circumstances, 
the AirLink millimeter wave system is the better way to go. Getting back to the FSO beam characteristics and the FSO product line. Uh, so we're going to talk about the, the technology of FSO. We're going to talk about where you want to do your deployments, how to get ready for it. Um, and we're really going to go through all of the mounting requirements and how to choose a mount location, etc. So to give you an idea of the narrowness of the beams, and, and this is partly why FSO is such a great option for many customers is the high security that a very narrow pencil beam can provide. You can't interfere with it, you can't um, steal it. It's a very secure way of communicating between the two units. To give you an idea of the uh, diameter of the beams, the wide beam air bridge SX has a 5.7 millirad beam divergence and the SX has half that at 2.8 and then the LX has the narrowest. Now it is a 2 millirad beam divergence which is a very narrow beam however it does have the tracking and because of the tracking it actually gives you the greatest amount of um, so-called beam divergence because it's the equivalent of a 28 millirad angle. So to put this kind of into perspective so that you can see as we progress through this slide deck, um, as I emphasize how important it is for mount stability, part of the reason that we spend so much time talking about mount stability and making sure you're mounted to a solid surface is the beams, even though in laser terms are very wide at 5.7 millirad, for instance, you're still talking only a third of a degree in beam divergence. And as you get narrower, you're looking at the AirBridge LX having a 0.114 degree of uh, beam. This means we need to really make sure that we are focused on doing our installations correctly because the installation will be the key to the success of the link. So here's where, where you can see where beam tracking um, on the AirBridge LX is most appropriate and most needed. So a lot of times you are restricted to only being able to install maybe in the center of a building, uh, maybe it's on a um, uh, tilt-up or a flimsy roof. Well, what happens is a diurnal movement. It's basically a slow movement of the building as it expands and contracts causes the unit to change its angular movement. Now, the tracking keeps the units aligned during this movement. So here you can kind of see that um, the narrowness of the beam. So starting on the left-hand side, just to give you an example. So here you are at two kilometers. So the beam itself at 2 kilometers is 12 feet in diameter when we're talking about an AirBridge LX. However, with tracking, you can see just how much more movement the system can actually tolerate and still keep everything in alignment. And as you see through the other examples, moving from left to right, doesn't matter the distance. The tracking will always give you the benefit and greater amount of um, flexibility in terms of building movement for the system to stay in alignment. So some things that we want to talk about and consider is how are you going to be deploying the system? Are we talking a simple point-to-point, -point, which again is about 80 to 90 percent of our installs are standard point-to-point, -point. and then um, the middle section is fairly common, but not, not as common, is basically a point to multi-point. But when light point FSO systems are talked about in terms of a point to multi-point, we're not talking about like an omnidirectional system on building A. What we're talking about is having two systems on building A pointing to two different buildings, in this case a building B and a building C and having building A have two fiber runs and two cable runs going down to the switch room. 
The other option that's um, available is if you need to extend the distance or you don't have clear line of sight and you need to have a hop point in order to maintain the length of your, your uh, signal, you have the back-to-back -back operation, which is seen at the bottom. In this case, you have the two units in on building mounted to building B pointing in opposite directions. So here's your standard um, typical uh, installation for us, a roof-to-roof -roof configuration. So whenever you're doing any type of point-to-point -point, uh, deployment with LightPoint, the things that we're always going to ask you is, what is your distance? Once we know the distance, we can narrow down the product options that are best for you. At that point, we can then start to look at what kind of angles are we going to have. Are you shooting from a second story to a 20th story? At what distance? And that can help us figure out what will be the best product for you. Now, you can do a window-to-window -window configuration. Because these units are completely eye-safe at any distance and they are EMI-safe, you can install these in offices, behind windows, in conference rooms, etc. So it is possible to do a window-to-window -window configuration, but you do need to keep in mind what kind of tint is on the windows and what kind of angles do we have to the glass. And we'll talk more about that shortly. And then lastly is kind of the combination, one behind glass and one on the roof. And a lot of times this is taking place because um, the tinting on one of the windows is so strong that we can't use a window-to-window -window configuration or there's some sort of reflective um, covering on the windows that prevents it from being a window-to-window. -window. So here's what we're talking about when you're doing a window-to-window or a window to roof application, you want to try and keep the unit as perpendicular to the window as possible. You want to really maintain as small an angle as possible so that way you have the least amount of reflected energy as it leaves the light point unit and tries to penetrate the glass. The same thing can be said for um, double pane windows. You have to be careful because you have kind of a double bend to the, to the uh, laser as it passes through the glass. So here's just some examples of what we're referring to. So the, again, the closer you can be to straight onto the glass, the better off you will be. And you can kind of see on the right-hand side, when you have such a steep angle, how it causes the light to bend as it passes through the glass. Other things to kind of keep in mind is we are a true line-of-sight product. Anything that will block it or cause interference is attenuation to the signal. And that can be smoke, and it can be fog or steam coming off of equipment on the roof itself. Now, the units themselves are outdoor rated and designed to be used in all outdoor applications. However, you do want to make sure your angles are such that you're not getting too much direct rain landing on the front of the faceplate and pooling. You want to make sure that you're not going to be getting direct sun on the face of the unit. It'll cause it to go into an overload state. And then last but not least, the lower you are to a roof, the greater the chances of getting heat shimmer or scintillation that can cause the, the units, uh, the beam to kind of be dispersed. So the closer you can get to the edge of the building in that case would be best. And other kind of peculiar things that take place when you've been doing business as long as we have, you start to hear and see customers that installed their units when the trees were small, and then five and seven years. And again, these, these units are designed to last for years and years and years on the roof. So five, seven years later, that little tree that no one thought twice about is now a big tree and causing an impact to the signal strength. And this happens more than you would be, you'd like to think about, but 
when you are deploying your system in a construction environment, you do need to be aware that as the cranes pass through, they can break the line of sight. Now, it's not going to cause any damage to the units, but it will cause brief interruptions to your signal, which could cause brief interruptions to your data path. And the other thing is also, you know, when you deploy these on a roof where you're going to have workmen coming up and down and working on air conditioning vents and other aspects of the roof, the further you are away from the edge, the greater the chances of them walking in front of the beam and causing the system to have an outage. So some things as you're, as you're doing your site walkthroughs and you're looking to deploy a light point solution, some things that we want to know is, are you going to be using uh, direct 48 volt DC or are you going to use our standard PoE injector? Now I will tell you that 95% or more of our installations use the PoE. It's the easiest way to do it. It's simple, it's direct, and it uses CAT5E or CAT6 cabling, which is readily available and easy to deploy. The next thing we'd want to know is how are you going to be connecting the data source? Now we have the ability as you look at the rear of this unit, we can do an SFP for fiber or we can do copper with a 10, 100, 1000 copper. And you'll see on the left hand side you'll see an SFP inside of this unit and then in the middle you'll see that there is a, another port that is a standard RJ port that is the standard copper port. Now because we use an SFP in all of our AirBridge products you are going to make sure the fiber that you run is terminated with LC connectors. Also because this unit is hot swappable on the SFP even if you did make an error and purchase the system with a multi-mode SFP but you ran single mode fiber uh, you can just exchange that SFP for a single mode versus a multi-mode and just hot swap it in. Now this is a little bit different image but it does give you a nice clear look at data port 1 which is an open SFP data port 2 being an open uh, 10 100 1000 port and then you have your PoE port. So bare minimum this is going to be a two cable solution. One cable for your power and one cable for your data. So you do want to plan accordingly when you are bidding your project or doing your installation that you do run the correct amount of cables up to the roof to be able to supply both power and data to the rear of the unit. So the other part of your walkthrough or site survey as the customer is looking to deploy a wireless um, link is to figure out where is the best place to get line of sight. Uh, sometimes it requires custom installations and peculiar locations and sometimes it's very straightforward. So what do you need to look at? You need to make sure you get up on the roof and verify that there is clear line of sight to the remote location. You do want to start to search out and look for a good stable surface. We always recommend going to the corners. The closer you can get to the corners of a building, the sturdier your installation will be, the less issues you will have. You also want to make sure that you can get both your power and your fiber or copper for data to the location that you want to do your installation. And this is one that does come up occasionally that customers will do say an installation that requires bucket trucks or you can't even see or adjust the unit without some sort of contortion to get to it. So make sure that you do your installation in a location that allows you to actually get behind the unit and do a proper installation and alignment. And then you have to decide how are you going to mount this unit. There's, for every situation, there's a different type of mount or options available. 
most of the time you're looking at two choices. Are you going to penetrate into the building in some way, shape, or form? Or are you going to use a non-penetrating style of mount? And I'm going to show you examples of both as we go through this. You want to make sure that you have roof access and you want to make sure that if you are putting in a tall mount that you have it guide down to create stability. And then is this going to be on a peak or an angle? And this isn't, doesn't happen very often, but if it does, that does make the installation a bit more challenging. So I've talked about stability, I've talked about um, getting to the corners, I've talked about what kind of um, solid mount you need in order to maintain and keep the signal strength good throughout the years of, of the deployment. So what you need to look for as you're walking the property is, is there a place where there's, say, poured concrete or, um, again, getting to the corner of buildings, um, steel beams, if there's already an existing mount, you know, make sure it's solid. If it's a, a whip antenna type that's already up there because it's they have an omnidirectional antenna, that's not going to be good for a light point solution. Uh, the light point needs to have a solid mount. So over the years, we found that things like wood have a tendency to warp and twist as time goes on, and they get wet and dry. We find that old brick has a tendency to start to crumble and not hold the mounts as well. Fiberglass flexes and sheet metal, of course, twists, expands, and contorts. So those would be things and surfaces to avoid. So this is an example of the mount that we supply with our FSO solutions. We call it the light point universal mount. It's composed of three pieces, the base, the pole, and the cap. And we call it the universal because you can mount it in an upright position or you can mount it in a horizontal position. It really depends on where you can install this. And as we move through the slide, you're going to see that quite frequently the installation requires only pieces of our universal mount to be used in conjunction with other items that you purchase from um, other distributors or wholesalers of mounting equipment. Here you can see these are the um, the different mounts that people have used. So you have um, off-the-shelf mounts like from Baird or from ComSight that you can just purchase these mounts, have them delivered, bring them up to the roof and deploy them. Some customers prefer to be a little bit more um, creative and they create their own mounts based on equipment that they have available or a skill set that allows them to build it themselves. However, or whatever you choose in order to mount to, you want to make sure that it can withstand 125 mile an hour winds so that it is safe, secure, and will maintain good signal strength throughout the course of a year. Here you can see there's some sort of, there are oftentimes poles that pre-exist in an environment. Uh, sometimes you need to hang the unit upside down from a conference room. It really depends, again, on where you're going to be deploying the system as to which mount works best for your location. So let's step through and look at some customer installations. And you can see how they have used, in some cases, all or none or some of the light point universal mount in their application. On the left you can see they use none of the light point mount and they just use Unistrut in order to mount the light point unit to existing um, I-beams on the roof. Um, you can see in the bottom right hand side they've used all of the light point mounting equipment. Here the customer has deployed the unit on an extremely tall, uh, roughly 12 foot pole, um, which we wouldn't recommend except that he did exactly what we'd recommend is he guided down. You can see the four point guying that he's done. That kept this system extremely stable and was able to withstand all the winds 
that occurred in uh, this is a Florida deployment. Sometimes you need to get a bit creative and here you can see a monopole installation of an AirBridge LX product and you can see that they've used some products coming from a website called Site Pro One and Site Pro One carries a lot of uh, mounting equipment for various types of wireless deployments. Again, here you have just the top portion or cap of our universal mount being attached to a pole um, and again using a Valmont universal pipe adapter kit uh, they were able to attach it to a railing um, on a customer's stairwell. Here the customer had a pre-existing uh, large diameter pole and they used the R white pole and R cap and used what's called a uh, pipe transfer kit in order to attach it to that pole. Again, I, I'm, uh, you can see if one of these types of installations works for your particular area, um, I've tried to put the website that you can go to in order to find this product on um, on their website, uh, which is a Site Pro One website. So um, here's some tips. You know, if you're installing this, you want to keep your poles as short as possible. Okay, that's always going to give you the greatest amount of stability. As an example, a two and seven eighths inch OD pipe can go about one meter unsupported without any issues. If you need to go taller, then you need to go with a wider or larger diameter pole. Here we're talking about a four and a half inch OD pipe, which is good up to two meters or roughly six feet. And it can actually hold multiple units because that is an extremely sturdy pole. So I've given a lot of details here that you can read and, and take a look at. Uh, pipe transfer kits are a great way to attach to existing poles. A non-penetrating roof mount, and I'll read this verbatim, a non-penetrating roof mount is only as rigid as the roof it is sitting under. I cannot tell you how many times I've had people go up on the roof with a non-penetrating, they align it, and then as they step away from the mount, the weight of the individual moving away has caused the roof to then spring back up and taken the system out of alignment. So you need to really be careful and know the kind of surface that you're deploying on and be able to work with that surface. The other thing you need to be aware of is angular deflection. So the more that a tower, the taller a tower is and the higher you mount on a tower, the more you're going to see the movement. The goal for an FSO system is to be mounted as low on the tower as possible. That will avoid as much of the movement as it can. So whenever possible, mount as low as you can on a tower. Now tracking systems give you a lot of help. As we looked at earlier, that tracker gives you 28 millirads of movement that helps the system stay in alignment. But the AirBridge SX um, standard and wide beam have no tracking mechanism. This means that the mount needs to be extremely stable. The best way to do that is get to a corner. The corners will minimize the amount of building movement and will allow the systems to stay in better alignment over the course of a day, um, a season, and a year. When done properly, once it's installed, you shouldn't have to go back except for general annual maintenance to verify everything is still looking good. So while this seems pretty basic, if you get up on the roof and you're starting to drill into the building and you're finding that the building materials are soft or they're crumbling, that's not going to work. A lot of times, building manufacturers, especially on 
newer buildings, they like to use veneers. So it's not really part of the building, but it's a veneer that makes the building look nice. It's maybe half an inch thick, maybe it's an inch thick, but that's not enough to be the stability required for an FSO solution. Best to look for something else. Uh, sheet metal flashings, again, those things will warp and twist over time. Um, additionally, a flashing, once you penetrate it, you have to be really careful to make sure you completely waterproof it again. And for indoor installs, you want to make sure you don't just put it into the plasterboard. You need to find um, the studs behind the wall and make sure you install into those. So we always recommend that the units be as close to the windows as possible. You don't want to be having it installed in an area where it's possible for someone to get between the FSO unit and uh, the window. You want to make sure that it's fastened securely. Again, if this is going to be in an office environment, you don't want this to accidentally fall and possibly hurt someone. So it's most important to make sure that it's installed securely to the wall. And then again, um, we do have some people who install these in front of windows that open and you need to make sure that when it moves, when it, the, if they open that window, that it doesn't change the way that the laser penetrates the glass. And then last but not least, if you are seeing a heavy coating on the window or heavy tinting or you have double or triple plane glass, your chances of penetrating it are um, very difficult. It should be avoided uh, just because it's so hard to penetrate. So that gives you some ideas of how to install light point systems, where to install light point systems, and examples others have done for successful light point installations. If you have any questions or if you want to take a look at our YouTube channel, please do so. We have a lot of other videos and mounting um, examples on our YouTube site along with other product information. Well, I hope that this has been informative for you, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Thank you.